<laughs> I had to come up here. Well, hello there, everyone. I see some people I mentored that are here. Praise Jesus. I see a lot of good people, a lot of faces and everything. All right, we need to get in the word, right? Prophets don't run. So when the Lord told me this, I said, Lord, what are you, um, what, what's the title? And he said, prophets don't run! Exclamation. So that means we're doing some running, right? Some of y'all know who you are. You know who you are. Jesus ain't gonna have me call you out. Because you know who you are. But one thing, um, you could be prophetic. You may not have the gift of the office of a prophet, okay? But when you are in the umbrella of a prophetic church or ministry, and when you're around prophets, that flow of the anointing flows on you. And then you become prophetic and you flow with the Holy Spirit, right? So this message, you may say prophets. Okay, well, Lord, I'm not really a prophet. But there's something you can take away. It's just like the Bible. You can find something. You can read something over and over. And you can take away something for yourself, well, you're going to be able to take away, even if you don't walk in this office. I knew God, was, God said, every seat is going to be filled just about. Look around. That's because the word prophet, people are ready. People are ready. People are hungry that are prophets. Some of you have been um, hiding in your cave so long, so deep in the cave that you had breadcrumbs. So that you can find your way out, right? But the breadcrumbs disintegrated because you've been in the cave too long. Yeah, this is serious. That's what the Lord said. You've been stuck. You don't even know how to get out. And I just want to say to you all, I know how it feels to be rejected. I know how it feels to be rejected in your own home as a prophet especially those who carry the mantle. And one thing about it, a lot of times people see the, the plus side of it. Hold on, let me time this. They see, I'm just, I'm very real. Okay, so. <laughs> people see the plus side of the prophet. They see them prophesy, right, Apostle Michael? They like that. Oh, I, I want to hear the word of God. I want to hear the word of God. But it comes with warfare. That part you don't see. It comes with fear because fear, the spirit of fear will literally try to attack you and attack your mind. It plays with your mind. You feel lonely. You feel by yourself. There's a lot of betrayal that goes on. See, a lot of people don't see that part. They just see the other part. But some of you may not have, you may be a prophet, but you may be grooming. God may be grooming you. So this, I'm just giving you information, okay? He may be grooming you and developing you. If he put that mantle on you when he's grooming you, it would be too heavy for you. It would be way too heavy for you. As a prophet, God, it takes years of development, Years of development. I see everybody is listening. I'm just going to wait on the Holy Spirit. He's doing something. Doing something. He's going to break some mindsets. He's going to break some mindsets. Some of you have sat on your gift. You just forgot about it. And you just became common like everyone else. But the Lord says, wake up, prophets, wake up. And what do prophets do? What do prophets do? They encourage. You bring correction. You bring warnings. And you bring judgments. And so you have to really 
be groomed in that because if you are not groomed in it yet and you go to correct someone and it's not that time, it can have a backlash on you. And some of you have forgotten your assignments, didn't want to do your assignments because some of the assignments that God has for you are big and could be scary. It could be scary. That's why you have to allow God to groom you. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. And you're going to come up against many Goliaths. Many Goliaths. And one of the most common Goliaths that you're going to go up against is Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel. How many have seen that spirit, know that spirit? I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you later what, what, what happens to her and what does she do? Why do prophets hide? They battle fear. That is number one. You'll go, am I a prophet? Am I a prophet? Am I a prophet, God? And people will confirm you over and over that you are a prophet and you still will battle it in your mind you still will battle it and another one is insecurities the enemy will work on your insecurities y'all are hearing me right it's scary it can be scary when God gives you something, assignment to go, to face someone. Sometimes we have to face our pastors. We have to face our leaders. We have to face our family members. We have to face our parents. We have to stand, face our boss, that God gives us a word. And it's scary. And you have to be in prayer. You can't walk with this call and not be at the presence of God. You have to be at the presence of God always. The more you are at his presence and you are praying, the more you will hear, the more you will see, the more you will have confidence. Even if you don't have this gift. You will have the confidence of God to walk boldly. And even if you have an assignment and you are afraid, I'm telling you, you walk, you just have, even if your knees are buckling, you continue to walk. If God has you to face a Jezebel spirit, and I'm talking about Jezebel spirits in your church, in your family, and God tells you to face them and say this word to them or somebody in your ministry. One thing you don't do is allow your emotions to be in the way. If your emotions are up, take a time out. Take, a time, take yourself a time out. Because you going and walking and delivering the voice piece, the message of God with your own emotions in it, you can mess up the whole thing. They may already going to reject what you say. But when you put your own emotions, you can just mess it up. And then the Holy Spirit has to fix it away. Fix it, fix it, fix it. And even if you... Even if you come up to that person and they say no and they get upset. When you know it's of God, not out of your own emotions, it hurts. The reason why it hurts is not because, oh, they didn't accept me. No, they, they didn't accept the word of God. And it becomes passion because you see what can happen to them if they don't take heed to the word of God. And it hurts your spirit. Prophets, you cry. Come on, you cry. Part of our job is crying at the feet of God. So the Holy Spirit is going to promote some of the people here. You all are ready. 
you're ready to take that step. You're ready. Some of you are just, I'm just tired of running, God. I'm tired of going here. I'm tired of going there. We already feel alone. We already feel we're by ourselves. We already feel nobody understands us sometimes. And we always feel like the oddball. Even when we're around people, we feel like they don't understand me. They don't understand me. And so if God sends a Goliath your way and you know you have an assignment of the Lord to speak to that person, whoever it may be, you take it to prayer. And the Holy Spirit will speak the words out of your mouth. He just needs you just to, he just wants to use your vessel. That's why we're afraid. We're like, I'm, af- I'm afraid, I'm afraid what I'm gonna, what, what, what I'm gonna do. The Holy Spirit just needs you. He just needs your body. He just needs your voice to speak on his behalf of the kingdom of God. And I'm going to read um, Jonah. I'm going to come out of the book of Jonah. And I know some of you have heard Jonah over and over, but I believe in Jesus' name. There's going to be something in there you never saw before that you're going to see yourself. Okay? I see the spirit of sleepiness in this room. That's a spirit. I know we all worked and we tired. You were jumping, shouting. All of a sudden, you're tired. It's, it's a spirit, okay? I see it. Because it doesn't want you to come alive. So I'm going to read Jonah 1 through 10, okay? I know you go, that's a lot. And I know you're processing. I'm, not, I'm the type of person, I don't have to hear amen every second. Okay, so you're not going to hear me go, okay, I'm preaching to the lights. You're not going to hear me say that, okay? Now, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nivea, that great city, and cry out against it. For their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarish from the presence of the Lord. All right, look at this map. First of all, he didn't even negotiate with God. When God told him, the people are wicked. I need you to go and speak to them. Normally we go, oh God, I'm, I, are you sure? Right? I, I don't think I'm, uh, I'm ready. No, jo- Jonah just went, peace. <laughs> he really did. It don't say that. It said he fleed from the presence of God. And that's what some of you are doing right now. Running from the presence of God. Now look, his assignment was only 550 miles. But he said, I'm going to run away from the presence of God 2,500 miles. I want you to see that. Remember, our assignment is not as hard as we think it is. But when we go off kilter, when we detour ourselves, it's harder. It's longer. It don't produce no fruit. That's like you hearing God say something and you go, you know what? I'm going as far as Canada or as far away from God to the islands. Of course, those places sound really good, but you're not going to have fun because you're running from the presence of God. How do you run from the presence of God? He's watching you. He's looking down. You can't run. And that's what some of you are doing with the call of God. Whether you are in other gifts, you're running. And I know I'm right because he gave me this message. Some of you may not be running 2,500 miles physical, 
but in your head you are from the presence of God. Your mindset is far. There's been so many people I ministered that I see prophets. The Lord has me to wake prophets up like, you're a prophet. And they'd be like, what? You know? And then sometimes it took them a year to accept it. Because in their mind, they were 2,500 miles away. You can't run from the presence of God, people. You cannot run from the presence of God. He is there with you everywhere you go. And that's what the spirit of fear does. It has you to run and you're running and you don't even know where you're running to. Amen. All right. Four. But the Lord sent out a great wind of the sea and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down and was fast asleep. Okay, he didn't, he didn't went out. So the captain came to him and said to him, what, what do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we will not perish. And they said to one another, come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast their lots and the lot fell on Jonah. What do you know? Then they said to him, please tell us. For whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? What do you, where do you come from? What is your country? And what people are you? See, the Lord will, it was exposing him because he was hiding. So he said to them, I am a Hebrew. So he's confessing now. And I fear the Lord of God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, why have you done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Okay. After that, you can read that on your own. They wanted to toss him off. He, he volunteered like, look, I've been caught. If you toss me off, it's going gonna, it's gonna to close. It's going to shut. Everything's going to be smooth. But they didn't want to, so they tried their hardest to save the ship so they wouldn't have to throw him over. But they threw him over, and then the big fish swallowed him, as y'all know. And then you guys can read the rest of the story because that's another journey. So also what happens is when you're walking in disobedience, the Lord's going to shake things up. You see, when you run from God, it's a sin. See, that's what Christians don't realize they don't realize the assignments that God has given them and they're running. It's a sin. God gives us grace. We know that, right? But when you're running and you don't acknowledge anything of it, it becomes a sin. And what happens to that is those around you, things start to happen because of your open door of sin or even people you know that you're around that are disobedience to God. Things start happening to you. You're just going, hey, this is a beautiful day. Everything is beautiful, me and God. And then all of a sudden something happens to you. And you're going, God, wait, what? We, we, I know, God, when, when you're trying to talk to me about something, but this is happening to me and I don't know where it's coming from. A lot of times it's people you're around, there's disobedience. And even yourself. So what I do, I pray for my family to forgive them for all of their sins daily. I even pray for my sins, okay, because I'm not perfect. So I'll go, Lord, I just ask that you forgive everyone of my family, even all the ministries that I'm in. I ask for forgiveness because I don't want anything coming against me. So that's something you have to think about. You running from your call 
You saying no to your assignment of God as a prophet and sitting on it becomes disobedience. It is in your spiritual DNA. You cannot run from it. God is getting ready to do a new thing to the prophets of God. It's time for us to rise up and that fear is going to break off of your mindset. It's time. There's ministries that God has been waiting for you to do and you've been slow about it. And you've been kind of, uh, there's also ministries that God says, I want you to step up. And when God tells you to step up, it's going to be something supernatural. It's going to be something that your mind cannot understand. But you got to obey prophets. You got to obey. Hallelujah. And one thing that happens, one thing that happens to me when my mind gets attacked, there's a scripture because prophets, we get attacked in our mind. Things that will come in your mind that you would never, ever think of. Things that will just rush through your mind. Things that you would go, I never thought of that. You have to take over your mind captive. So there's a scripture. I didn't give this to them, but it's um, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. And it says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ so how I put that in a prayer when those things come into my mind I'm like oh no 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 devil oh no devil I go, I cast down every thought, every imagination that exalts itself above God. And I bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ Jesus. That spirit flees because it doesn't want to go into obedience of Christ Jesus. I'm telling you, sometimes you just need a break. You say that scripture and he will run. He will run. I'm telling you, that scripture is powerful. Powerful. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is just working on y'all. I love it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Traits of Jezebel that you're going to go against. Okay. Let me tell you what Jezebel, this is something what prophets go against. It can also be a man or a woman. That spirit could be in a man or woman. That spirit can also be in you. Okay? It can also be in you. I know you're probably going, what? Jezebel and me? You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. Because it could be in you, preventing you from moving forward into your call. It could be a man or a woman. It loves control. Manipulation, loves to cause fear, discouragement, seduces, teaches false doctrine. And it may not, you may, they may not have all of them, but some of them. Loves leadership positions. They thrive on that because when they see a weak um, department, they want to take over it. Because they know the people in there are afraid to confront them. Some of y'all are afraid of confrontation to confront. It's not a bad thing. You have to confront things when you see things are wrong in the body of Christ or even in your family. You have to confront it. But some of you are afraid to confront the truth to people. God needs you. And I, and I have to tell you, it's a timing thing, okay? Okay. Don't just get up and start talking. You, you're going to get hit spiritually. You wait for the timing of God. And some people, when they get into the prophetic, they become very zealous. Apostle Michael knows what I mean. They start, they start going and saying everything, and it's the timing is off. Pray, prophets, for the right timing of God to speak that word and when you speak that word it's going to bring truth it's going to bring revelation and some people are going to get it and they're going to go on their knees and say oh father god forgive me 
forgive me. We see how the churches are now. They have compromised. And one thing you cannot do, doesn't matter if you're a prophet or not, don't compromise. That's dangerous because you're people pleasing. When you're afraid of what people will think, you will compromise. You will water down the truth. Don't. You speak the truth. And when you speak the truth, things happen. That person may be needing you to say something to them, to break the shackles off of their minds. Prophets, you are important. You are valuable in the kingdom of God. God needs your voice to be the spokesperson, to speak the things of heaven. Don't short yourself. Don't short yourself. Hallelujah. Also, what happens when a prophet a lot of times will talk to someone? It could be they need to do something, change something. And a lot of people in the body of Christ don't like change. You got to change. God changes daily. You can't hold on to the old. I've had people say, you know, I don't like change, but you're going to have to when you're walking with Christ and especially the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of people, a lot of you may say, I don't like change, but you, that's a mindset because as prophets, you are changers. God uses you to change the atmosphere and you're not going to be popular. You're not going to be invited to the parties, y'all. Y'all laughing because y'all been not invited. Everybody's invited but you. Sometimes that's because God is protecting you so that you won't be caught up in that because our flesh wants acceptance. And so we get caught up. They could be good people, but God is putting you in a place of holiness. Holiness. That's where you're going. You're going to holiness as you start going and growing. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. And God is going to use the Holy Spirit to train you. And he's going to show you things that your natural mind won't be able to handle it. And you just, you just pray. There's some things you may see. You may see something on a person, demonic. Okay? Yeah, these are our brothers and sisters in Christ. They need help. They need our help. Hallelujah. And remember as prophets, your life is strategic. Your life is strategic. God has you set apart. God has you sometimes in that cave but sometimes y'all stay too long, but you're in a cave of protection and he waits for the right time for you to come out, give the word and say something. Everything is strategic. You are not going to be like everyone. You're not going to be like everyone. You have to accept it right now. You have to accept it right now. Your pastors may not even accept you. You have to accept that. But treat them with love. Treat them with kindness. Your leaders may not accept you. But treat them with love. Treat them with kindness. Why? Because God's going to do something. And you don't want your character to be flawed by you saying something out of order. Because when that time comes, when God gives you that word to speak to them, they will hear you. And they will honor you. Characteristics of a prophet. They know when it's time to move in a new direction. We don't like stale. They're good deliverance ministers. They expose hidden things. They detect when things are out of order. That's a big one. <laughs> They're spontaneous. They know the spirit of Jezebel. They don't mind holy interruptions. Are sensitive to the spiritual realm. And we tell the truth. 
We could be radical, especially when you're walking in your gift. You could be radical and you offend people. All right, I'm going to show you something. We're like sandpaper. Okay, well, this side is smooth, right? Just wording. Okay, that's when you get the prophetic word of God. But this side is rough. Feel it? Rough, huh? Rough, 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 right? That's when the Holy Spirit is upon you, really. (laughs) Because you're going to tell the truth. And you will offend people. You will offend them. Even when you're coming out of love and kindness. You're going to offend them somehow. Even if you put a pretty bow on it. They're going to get offended, some of them. And some may say, you know what, Monica? That was, you, you tell the truth, that hurts. But you're speaking the truth. And so always remember, we're like sandpaper. We're smooth, but rough. And that's okay, because that's who we are. You know, sometimes I go, oh, I wish I was delicate, Lord. I wish I was delicate. Because I'm like, you know, that's who I am, you know, but the Lord didn't make me that way. And some of you are rough trying to be all delicate. You can't. It's like a square trying to fit in a circle. You can't. It's okay to ruffle the feathers when the Holy Spirit uses you. Hallelujah. All right. We speak what some people do not want to hear. We fight carnality. We uproot what God has not planted. We are also spiritual midwives. We call out sin and we wait on the Lord. And we ask the hard questions and we take a stand. You have to take a stand, y'all. You have to take a stand. And don't back down. I'm talking when you know it's God. Not out of your flesh. But when you know it's God. And when someone's saying no. And you're saying, yes, this is of the Lord. And they're saying, well, how do you know it's God? How do you know? Oh, look at that. Are you sure? You take a stand. And you don't break. And you don't move. And as you take a stand and and you don't break, God is with you. You remember that. You are the voice piece. Some of you are going to have hard assignments. Some of you are going to be traveling overseas into the jungles, into places you never thought you would be. And you can't be weak. God is grooming you. God is training you up for success. But some of you, I am praying, you don't leave still with chains. We can say no. We can say no. And we were chained. I don't want to put on my feet. Pretend this is my feet. Sorry. We move slow. Some of you, you're saying chains off. No more. No more. Lord, no more. The chains are off. The chains are off, 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 off. But there's going to be some of you are going to question. The enemy's going to mess with you. But we're going to pray for you at the end. And some of you have these chains. Because people, you're wanting acceptance. You're not going to be accepted all the time. Everybody's not going to love you. See, I'm talking the truth so that you can lead because no one talks about this. No one shares this. That's why prophets, we, 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 we don't, no one's talking about it. So we, we, we mess up on things. But I'm praying in the name of Jesus, no more shackles. No more shackles. No more shackles. No more shackles having to get someone to pray Uh, Apostle Michael will pray and the other team will pray and you go walk free and then all of a sudden the next week you got these shackles back on you. No more of this. You're going to be walking in confidence and in boldness. And some of you that have been sitting on your gift need to wake up and get up. 
You need to get up and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm talking about some, some of you, maybe some of you on watching or will be watching. You know you have the mantle on you and you've been sitting on a gift that God has given you that is so precious, so precious, and you know it. You need to ask the Lord, forgive me, God, because that's walking in disobedience. And when you walk in disobedience, nothing is going to happen. There's not going to be no breakthrough. There's not going to be ev nothing. Everything I feel in the spirit, those that have the office of a, of a prophet and you allow the chains to stay on, I feel in my spirit, you, it's like molasses around you. It's like molasses. It's like you can't really move. But I'm just telling you right now to ask the Lord to forgive you while you're in your seats. I don't know who you are. Just say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for not doing what you called me to do. Even if you don't have an assignment, forgive me, Lord. Even if you go, hey, I don't know, maybe I have. Forgive me, Lord. Sometimes we just need to say, forgive me, Lord, just to cover everything. Because we don't know what we be doing. Right? Hallelujah. And I'm going to uh, read something. How are you guys liking this? Amen. Amen. We speak the truth. We have to speak the truth as prophets. And this is what the Lord told me to read. And it's just something small. And this is from God. This is from God. Prophets, why do you run? Don't you know I am with you? Fear not. No more. No more um, things. What's ahead of you will happen. Okay, first of all, this was 3 a.m. Okay, I was writing this. The spirit of Jezebel will no longer chase you. For that spirit will be afraid of you. Why do you seek other people's counsel instead of me? I am here for you. I will be with you. Seek me and you shall find the answers you've been looking for. And it's okay to go to places. It's okay to go to get a word. It's okay to get um, something to learn. But some people, what God is saying, you're chasing after people. You're chasing after them instead of God. And God says, seek me. I will give you the answers. Everything you need, everything you want to know, I will give to you. And that's that part we got to wait on the Lord wait on him sometimes we don't want to wait it's waiting we already know the end we already got the prophecy it's that middle part that is so hard through the trials through the tribulations and not to say the least the attacks of the enemy but wait on God and seek him and he will tell you everything you need to know hallelujah I want to um, ask the prophets, um, there's a special thing I want to do. Those that know they are prophets, they walk in the mantle, not prophets, God's grooming, but those that know they walk in that office, they have the mantle. And God has been using them for at least two years. At least two years. You've been really, um, God's been at least two years and up. Sometimes we've been prophets for 30 years. But those that have the office of a prophet and been walking with this for at least two years, at least two years consistent, please stand. Come on now. Come on. Uh, Apostle Michael, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Pastor Jessica, come on, come on, come on, y'all. Y'all know who you are. Just stand. Pastor Fred, why are you sitting? <laughs> come on, even, the, even your team, even your team. Okay, don't be shy. Don't be shy. 
Come on, we're stepping out. Okay? Okay? I'm not, I'm not going to look at nobody because everybody think I'm looking at them. <laughs> All right. All right. Please come up. Please come up and just form a line. Go all the way down. All right. Aw, that's beautiful. I want y'all to turn around. Turn around. All of y'all turn around. Let's honor these people. <laughs> Prophets don't get honored in their own hometown. Some of you, you're all going to be there up here. you all gone through battle. you all gone through a lot. Some of you want to break and cry because it's been hard. I know. It's been rough. It's been hard. The attacks, the hits. But you keep walking. God is pleased. God is pleased. You deserve the honor right now. You deserve the recognition right now. You deserve it. How many places have you been where you, told, you heard people say, stand up prophets, you've been walking. You don't see it. You don't hear it. Hallelujah. All right. God bless you. Turn around. I'm going to pray. I'm not going to anoint because the oil is coming through my hands. All right. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we just thank you right now. And Pastor Renato, why were you? Up? You wasn't up here too. All right, turn around, Pastor Renato. He won too. All right. Yeah, God, God, God wants to give people recognize. I know you, you're a catcher. <laughs> you're on the job, Father God. We just thank you. We just ask that you stir up her right now. Just stir it up, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Stir it up. Stir it up right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, I'm just following the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, first of all, the Holy Spirit wants to heal you all from the brokenness of the attacks of the enemy. Just heal them, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. They're all, some of them are already battling it. You even sacrifice it happened. It hit your health. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The enemy even, because of who you are, came in your house and tried to destroy your marriage your kids right now in the name of Jesus heal their heart father God heal their heart father God for all the times all the years all the years all the years all the years a prophesying all the years of the rejection that they had to face all the years father God in the name of Jesus all the years father God feeling that they're they lost their mind they're crazy <sighs> hallelujah people saying who are you you're nobody. Lord, we break that right now in the name of Jesus. We break those shackles off these people that have a mighty mantle upon them right now in the name of Jesus. We cancel out every Simon of darkness that would try to come up against them with backlash because they speak the truth. They speak the word of God right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, release your oil. Release your oil right now upon them, Father God. Holy Spirit, have your way. We thank you. We thank you for the healing river right now. 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 I don't even have to touch you. The healing river right now. The healing river. Some of you, the Lord's letting you feel his love. The tax of the mind. The tax of who am I, Lord? The nightmares. Break them off, Lord, right now. The nightmares. The discouragement. The fear. Break it off right now in the name of Jesus. Break it off right now in the name of Jesus. The fear going higher. Oh, the Lord is working on them right now. Lord, you honor these prophets, Father God. The Lord said, you guys have been through hell and back. But you stand for me. And I'm going to release victory right now for you. Victory. Victory. 
Hold up, blah, 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 blah. The Lord said, I'm going to give you a voice blah, 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 that people will fear. And holy, the lion of Judah, boldness is going to come forth. I'm going to touch your stomach if you allow me. Release the fire, God. Release the fire, God. Release the fire. 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 Hora baba shoko. Release the fire. Hora baba shikera baba ka. Hora baba 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 ha shoko. Hora baba shikera baba. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Just start praying for them. The wars that they've been. These people have been battling. I mean, battling. The hits. The spiritual hits. Just pray. Pray for them. Pray for them right now. The rejection that has been smeared across their face, the Lord said. But the Lord says, I'm wiping it off right now. That you will represent my sunshine. You will represent my Shekinah glory. Because you didn't give up. You didn't drop the mantle. You didn't drop the call. You didn't run away. You run forward to me. Even when you were afraid. We thank you. 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 Hora ba 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 ba. Show kora ba 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 ba. Ho shi kara ba 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 ko. Ho ho. Oh, the Holy Spirit's doing something up here. <clears throat> Just let him minister to you right now. Hora ba ba. Show kora ba ba ki. Ra ba ba ka. Ho show kora ba 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 ba. Show kora ba ba ka. Show kora ba 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 